I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning and praise be to the Lord. Welcome to our uh, devotion for this morning. Uh, my name is uh, Gladys Nganga, Reverend Gladys Nganga, the hospital chaplain in Kenyatta University Hospital. Today we want to think about prayer and the topic of our devotion this morning is what we miss when we do not offer prayers. We take our reading from the book of Exodus 29 from verse 38 to 46. The book of Exodus, chapter 29, it's, uh, it's speaking to us about God giving instructions about worshipping him, what he expected of the Israelites to do once they were through building the tabernacle. He now gave, the, in chapter 28, he gives uh, the instructions on how the priestly garment is to be. He gives the instructions now on consecration of the priest. And it's in that uh, instruction when he's giving the consecration of the priest, he speaks to us about offerings. And in Exodus 29, 38 to 46, he tells them to offer sacrifices regularly. In the morning and in the evening, they were to offer two lambs, which were a year old. They were to offer grains and they were to offer <coughs> wines. So in the morning, they would offer one lamp. They were to give grains and wine. And in the evening, they were to re re repeat the same. So the Lord would go on and tell them, when you do this, I will meet you in, in the tabernacle, and my presence will be with you. And there, we can speak and I will speak to you. So this morning we want to see <clears throat> what is it that we, we miss when then we don't go to the Lord in prayer. Because through this text, God is asking them, come before me, offer me these sacrifices, and I will speak to you. Offering the offerings the Israelites were giving to the Lord are reminiscent to offering prayers today. When we pray, we have fellowship with the Lord. Fellowship is, if you were to explain that word, is companionship with someone who values you. Therefore, in the book of Exodus 29 verse 42, God valued the presence and the fellowship of these people because he said, for generations to come, this burnt offering is to be made regularly. He wanted their presence. And so he gave it a timeless time span for them to come before, the, before him. Though he planned it for morning and evening, he wanted them to know, you are welcome in my presence. And so when we do not pray, we miss then this companionship, this fellowship with the Lord. He has no time, it's, there is no time that we can't go to him. All through our life, we, were, we are welcomed into his presence. Number two, when we do not pray, we miss a chance to worship and to receive restoration from a God who is holy. When they offered burnt offering, it meant this, that they are admitting before God that they have sinned and they were unable to forgive themselves. Thus, when we offer <coughs> this offering, when we go before the Lord in prayer, we always have a moment to say, 
and to confess our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us. You see, when the offering of the lamp was given, it was burnt in whole. The same idea, <clears throat> God carries it forward to the time Jesus Christ died on the cross. The lamp that took away our sins. God looked down upon the world, John 3, 16, and he saw the inability of us to forgive ourselves of our sins. So he gave us Jesus as a sacrifice, a lamp. Jesus was a lamp that was given for the sacrifice of our sins, and so we were forgiven. But even when we are forgiven, we still sin. We still go away from the Lord. We still do things that do not honor God. <clears throat> and so when we go before the Lord in prayer, we are saying, Lord, forgive us. We have not honored you. And in his mercy, he hears us and forgives us. The second offering was a grain offering. They were to give the best grain to the Lord. One of the most interesting things to note here is that the book of Exodus was written when the children of Israel were traveling through the desert. When did they have time to grow grains to offer to the Lord? Then it goes on to say, by God asking them to give him the, to give him grains, they were giving him something very precious. These people were on the move. So when they plowed their land for grain, it was a very big a blessing that they received from the Lord. And it was not kawaida or usual, let us say that. It was a blessing that God gave them whenever and however he decided. Remember, the children of Israel were feeding on manna for many years. And still we see God asking for grain. Where did they get grain from? Then, whenever they got grain, whenever they stopped long enough for the grain to grow, it was some, something very special and important to them. So when they offered the grain offering, they were giving the Lord the best of what they had. Today the Lord calls us to give tithes. But what do we do? We say our salaries are, is, is, the salary is very little. It's not even enough for our household. Yet God is telling you through this word, that precious small thing that you have, that precious salary that you think you have, is what I would desire from you to receive a blessing. God says, bring your tithes into my house. And you see me opening the windows and doors of heaven to bless you. Because he knew, he knew, he knew and even now he knows that what we have is precious and we have received from him so when we give it back to him he knows we have given the best so in prayer we go before the lord and offer our thanksgiving prayers we tell him thank you that thus far you have kept us that far thus far you have uh, walked with us thus far you have done this and that in our lives we offer a thanksgiving prayer a grain offering Lastly, the Lord asked for a, a drink offering. Drink offering was wine, which was made from grapes. These people remember they were journeying through the desert. When did they grow green, uh, grapes? So whenever they stopped long enough to grow these grapes and to grow the grapes, the wine they received from the grapes was precious. And given to the Lord, 
was a pleasant offering that God received happily and in a celebratory mood. Wine is there to give a celebratory mood to every situation. So the drink offering is an example of, uh, for example, like thanksgiving, prayer also, like just like grain offering that says thank you for the forgiveness and the provision that Lord. The drink offering is reminiscent of us praying <clears throat> at the end when we pray the Lord's Prayer and say, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. We are celebrating the authority and the kingship of the Lord in us. <clears throat> so this prayer, the, uh, when we miss to pray, we miss an opportunity to worship God and to tell him who he is and to receive restoration through the forgiveness of sins and the provision that we receive. Lastly, we enjoy the presence of the Lord. Again, in Exodus 29, verse 42, the Lord is saying, My presence will be with you for generations to come. The presence of the Lord is what we need more than anything in our lives. And he says, and we are told that the Lord is omnipresent. He's always there with us then we are in the presence of the Lord and whenever we are in the presence of the Lord we are empowered we are advised for example when Jesus told Martha don't you see that Mary has found the best thing that is to sit at the feet of Jesus so let us give ourselves an opportunity to go before the Lord every morning and every evening, that he may guide us, he may strengthen us, and above all, we may hear him speaking even so through his word. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful for your word this morning. You have reminded us that in your presence, through prayer, there is guidance, there is peace, and there is strengthening, there is restoration. And there is forgiveness of sins, O oh God. We thank you because your word does not come without a purpose. It comes to accomplish something, O oh God. May it accomplish a desire in us, dear God, to always come before you in prayer. We remember each and every one who has listened. May you be with them and do them well. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen.